Welcome to Solid State Cinema. Today, we're working on a circus board based amplifier. And I've got my assistant, Cap Cat, to help us. Right, buddy? Bah! Get out of here. Let's get to that Marshall. All right, this is a Marshall model 5210. The complaint is there's a lot of noise and squeals and all kinds of neat things going on on the circus board. So let's take a ride and see what's inside of this neat Marshall amplifier. The one thing I did like is the filter caps are actually made in Japan. So you may be wondering why is he working with an amplifier halfway off the bench? Well, it's because of the brilliant location of the speaker output jack. So for the demonstration to show you the initial problem, I gotta do this balancing act. Let me fire it up and we'll see what's going on. All right, I'm gonna fire up the amplifier. If I see any signs of smoke, I'm obviously gonna turn it off. Doesn't that sound lovely? It does have some low level hum. A lot of crunchies, mostly in the power supply area. So more than likely, with all these circus board amps, We've got probably a million cold solder joints. The only way to fix it is to remove the board, inspect it under a bright light, and re-solder. So to get the circuit board out, you pretty much have to gut the amp. There's a couple screws here that secure the board, and you got all the knobs and nuts behind them. So let me get the board out and flip her over and see what the damage is. All right, there's the bottom of the circuit board. Somebody has already been in here resoldering all the pots. And you can see evidence that they resoldered the input jack. First thing I spotted, so I know it's hard to see, but right here is one of the filter cap connections. I can actually push that lead through the hole. It's loose. So we need to resolder that. Then I noticed something over here on the input jack that I have to show you. All right, if you recall, when I turned the amp on, you could hear a definite hum sound like an open input. These old plastic clip jacks have a contact that shorts when the jack is removed. So these two terminals should be shorted together. And go across them. We've got one mega ohm. That's because the contacts underneath are bent from a jack going in and possibly being cocked one way or the other, it bent the contact, so they're wide open. So I'm gonna have to replace that jack. All right, here's that input jack, just removed it from the board. You see that rear contact is not making connection. There's really no way to bend these back and get them to be reliable. You just have to change the jack. All right, I have the new jack in place waiting to be soldered. Here is the type of solder that you want to use on these circuit boards. Make sure it is a good quality rosin core solder. Don't use this new no lead stuff. I guarantee you, you will have problems. I see a lot of these amps come in here. The connections look all gray and they're not shiny then I know that it's lead-free solder. This stuff's very difficult to work with. So always make sure to take the time, grab a little alcohol, and clean that old rosin off the board. Probably really wouldn't make a difference, but it'll look a lot nicer when you're done. Okay, I have used my magnifying glass lamp and my trusty soldering iron, cleaned up all the connections that I could see that looked to be a problem. So let's reassemble it and see how it acts. All right, it's reassembled. I'm gonna flip her on. Well, it's either dead or it's really a quiet amp. So let's inject a signal. All right, I got a little looper set up here. We're on the normal channel. Good. Need to check that other channel and then she's probably ready to go. 
All right, connect to the foot switch. Here is the other channel. Excellent. So what a simple repair with the help from CapCat. It was actually perfect.